Welcome to this S7-1200 tutorial, in this lesson, we'll see what are conversion operations. Then, we're going to improve the program, which has been written in previous video. First instruction is convert value. Here, we determine data types of input and output. This instruction reads the content of the in parameter, and converts it according to the data type selected in the instruction box. For example, this program convert a real format number to a double integer. As you know, both of these data types, use 32 bits to store numbers. To have a better view, I change display format to hexadecimal. So this is hexadecimal representation of above program. Also, I can convert hexadecimal representation to binary easily. It just need to convert each hexadecimal number to its binary form. Here, this program tray to store 20.5 in double integer format. This format, use 31 bit to store numbers, and the last bit is used for number sign. So, this format cannot store the fractional part, and the result will be 20. So when you're using convert instruction, take care of data types. Because it may be you lost a part of data. Or suppose you're converting a double integer data to integer type. The integer format supports number from minus 32768 to 32767. So, if you want to convert a number like 40,000, which is out of this range, it doesn't work correctly. TIA software has four basic instructions to round a fractional number. First instruction, round the in value to the nearest integer. Next instruction, seal, round the in value to the next higher integer. So the next higher integer of 20.37 is 21. The floor instruction round 20.37, to the next lower integer which is 20. The last instruction, selects only the integer part of the floating point number. Although some results are the same, but these instruction are different at their details. To see their difference, Test these instruction with 20.7 and minus 20.72. Please compare each instruction results to learn their difference. All right, scale and norm instructions are used to change a specified range with a linear relationship. First, we must determine input output data types. These instructions have three inputs. The following figures show relationship between input and output value of these instruction. By the scale instruction, 0 goes to min value, and 1 goes to max value. Here, these are 0 and 100. As you know, with two points, we can write a mathematical function to represent the red line. By this function, any number will be gone to another number. For example, here, 0 0.37 is converted to 37. Or this program, will convert number 2 to 200. Norm instruction is like scale, but it works inversely. For example it convert 37 to 0 0.37. Alright, at previous video, we have written a program to display liquid level on a digital displayer, 
and also drain and fill the tank. These three functions were used to display liquid level, drain, and fill tank. Let's test the fill function. If you remember, we couldn't use this local variable here. Then, we have used M0.0 address instead of that. Now, I'm going to use a function block instead of third function, and try to have a shorter program with conversion operation. Function and function block have some inputs outputs, but what is their difference? CPU don't store anything, when is exiting from functions. Here, the function block has a data block, and it can store its data. So when CPU start it again, the function block use its previous data which has been stored before. Let me exit from this simulation. I want use a function block instead of third function. To define a function block, click here. Select the function block and define its name. Now let me copy the fill function program here. Now I can define a bit memory here, and use that for the SR instruction. Alright, if you test this program, you will see, this program won't work correctly. Here is another problem. For example, if the fill valve, get 8 value from this line, and I press the stop push button, the fill valve hold its last value, and will be on with 8 value. To solve this problem, I use the stop push button to move 0 to fill valve.
Now let me save this program, and call that, instead of this function. As you see, when a function block is inserted to program, TIA requests a data block for that, like counters or timers. Let me connect appropriate PLC inputs outputs, to this function block. Let me test this program, which has been written with a function block. As you see, the fill and stop push buttons works correctly. Alright, if I open the inserted data block from the left side, I can see the defined variables at the function block, which this data block stores them. Pay attention, here, we can change the data block. It means, we can use a function block many times with different data blocks. Let have a shorter program with conversion operation. You can use this program for display or function. Here, we have a round and multiplication instructions. The level sensor get us a number between 0 and 10. Then the round instruction converted to an integer number. Then it multiplied with 10. In the fill function, we can use this program. Here, when the start push button is pressed, the round instruction convert the level sensor number to an integer number. Then it is subtracted from 10. Because in the filling function, the liquid level and fill valve capacity, had an inverse relationship. Let's test and see the final program. In the next video we're going to learn program control operations. Thanks for watching.